प्रसार भारती अभिलेखा गार की प्रस्तुति सदा बहार सुनहरे दौर का अनमोल खजाना विल यू काइंडली नाउ लिसन आई एम टॉकिंग टू यू फ्रॉम अ ग्रेट डिस्टेंस एंड माय वॉइस इज स्लाइटली स्पॉइल्ड बाय द वेरी गुड बट नॉट येट परफेक्ट इंस्ट्रूमेंट थ्रू व्हिच आई एम स्पीकिंग सो यू मे नॉट गेस हु आई एम अनलेस आई टेल यू एज द डायरेक्टर हैज टोल्ड यू ऑलरेडी I am Rajagopal Acharya and I am speaking from Madras All India Radio Broadcasting Station. I have been given the honor of inaugurating this Hindustan Akashvani in Madras. When anyone speaks the vibrations taking shape according to each articulated sound are transmitted across the air. and touching the membrane in the ear set it in corresponding vibrations which in turn produce changes in the brain that give us a perception of what our friend is saying a very complicated and mysterious process but it is so quick and we are so used to it that we call it by the simple phrase of hearing and do not value it very much until by some misfortune we become deaf the air vibrations can reach only a limited distance after all which varies according to the strength of the speaker and the ear sensitiveness of the listener few people can address an audience of over 10000 even though they all keep perfectly silent and listen with rapt attention Now there are instruments through which if a man speaks he can be heard a thousand miles away or even further off wonderful but true the music of berlin and new york can be heard here where you are while they are playing it there a joke cracked at london can make you laugh in response here the vibrations at broadcasting stations are carried not by air but by the ether in space a river of electromagnetic force is first set flowing from the broadcasting station to the receiving station the sound waves produced by a speaker or singer at that station are made to impinge on this river every articulation and modulation of voice of the speaker or singer sets going characteristic ripples at that end of the river which ripples are carried on by the river and reach the receiving station at the other end in the same shape intensity and frequency these ripples vibrate the thin membrane in the receiving instrument which therefore exactly reproduces the speech or the music which brought about the original ripples thus the speech or music is heard at the receiving station and through a magnifying instrument is made louder and transmitted all round so that many may hear the akash or ether exactly conveys all the vibrations modified by each minute modulation and the sound picture is thereby faithfully reproduced at the other end at distances millions of times greater than the ordinary air could take them we can further explain this process by a simple analogy the light of the sun though it is so natural and common that we do not ask any questions about it is just such a continuous river of vibrations similarly set going by the sun 90 millions of miles away from us and when it reaches us it produces effects on our nerves which we call light and heat anything that intercepts the straight course of this river of sun vibrations such for example as the leaves and branches of a tree interfere with the flow of rays and cast a shadow which is just a picture of the tree that intercepted the rays if the leaves move in the breeze 
the shadow also moves correspondingly. The speaker or singer at the broadcasting station just casts a shadow like this across the beam of electromagnetic waves. Only, instead of a picture for the eye, it is a sound shadow for the ear. We get an exact reproduction of the song or speech at the receiving station. This conquest of Akash as a substitute vehicle for sound is wonderful. Whereas the air carries sound like a bullock cart, the Akash carries it across enormous distances like a railway train or steamship. But all this will do us no good unless the sounds conveyed are good and useful. What good is it that you hear the donkeys braying at a good distance? instead of being disturbed only by the donkey's neighborhood. Bullock carts are even better than railway trains if the trains carry robbers and rogues are only rubbish. Broadcasting is therefore valuable only if the programs are good and useful and add to the people's wisdom or joy and thereby serve to make them better and happier. The director hopes with the help of good men to make his programs such as to make us all better and happier. Merely conveying good and correct advice will not produce any effect. Just as a good receiving station is necessary for the music or the speech to be heard, a further good and sensitive receiving station in the human personality of the listener is necessary to convert what is heard into good human activities. Husbands will be told not to get drunk or beat wives. Wives will be told not to expect too much from husbands and to make the home pleasanter than the world outside for the toiling man who comes back home. <coughs> Boys and girls will be told to be sensible, industrious and amiable. Everybody will be told to be clean and regular in habits and to help the village and town to be clean and orderly and nice to live in. But unless there is a good receiving station, as I call the brain of the listener, it will be only words and electromagnetic achievement, but nothing more. Husbands should hasten to be good and wives hurry up to be wise and people generally to be truthful, industrious, clean and tidy and gentle to one another and not quarrel unnecessarily, making a hell of a good world. The Akash patiently suffers a great deal of disturbance and like the ocean resumes its serenity. It simply conveys the ripples and falls back into its eternal serenity. Let us by our character and serenity deserve this great Akash in which we live. Goodbye. May your receiving station be always in good order and serve you well. Behind that receiving station is the soul which is served well or ill as you are good or bad. The radio is not new to Madras. The corporation has for the past seven or eight years maintained a broadcasting station and provided the city with musical programs. But the new Akashwani is intended to cover not only the city of Madras but the districts in the province. It will broadcast messages and programs from outside the province and even from countries abroad. The medium will be for the present Tamil, Telugu and English. It's the object of the director not only to give entertainment but to give such programs as will give enlightenment and elevation of spirit to the villages. In every new venture there are many difficulties in the beginning which can be overcome only with patience and endeavor. What may appear in the beginning futile can later on develop into a very potent and good instrument. Private gentlemen can install receivers not only for private listening 
but also for public entertainment and instruction in the countryside. If philanthropic men come forward, it will speed up the program of the government in this respect and would be welcome to those who have conceived this project. I am an old-fashioned man, still clinging to the methods of, present, of personal instruction and not taking very favorably to things modern. Still, if we use this new discovery wisely and well, we can make it go very far in certain directions.